This is New Zealand's only amusement park. In what is surely one of the most beautiful countries on earth, thrills come in all shapes and sizes, unless you're a fan of big roller coasters. Rainbow's End houses three roller coasters, one kitty coaster, one family coaster, and one thrill coaster. But don't get your hopes up with that thrill coaster. It's an arrow corkscrew that opened in 1986, one of those plug and play layouts that you can find all around the world. Rainbow's End is primarily a kids and family park. They're located just south of Auckland, take up about 23 acres of land, and open their doors in 1982. They've got a total of 18 rides, plus various other activities, including some play structures and climbing activities. I had the opportunity to visit for my first time this past year. This was just one of the stops we made while exploring this beautiful country. I highly recommend checking out some of the other incredible sites while you're in New Zealand, because if you're a coaster enthusiast just looking to visit the country so you can come to this park, you're probably going to be disappointed. Rainbow's End has some redeeming qualities, but overall left a lot to be desired. So in this review, I'm going to talk about what worked, what could have been better, and what I'd love to see here in the future. So first off, Rainbow's End is in a pretty urban area. Like there's literally a mall right next door, a bunch of office buildings. It's one of many businesses in this part of Auckland. And so as a result, even their parking lot isn't that big. They have to be really conscious of space here. Upon entry, the first thing you're gonna see is this decorative Rainbow's End sign. Not super grand or anything, but a nice way to make a first impression. Once you're through the front gate, most of the park goes off to the right. Up ahead, I know is a laser tag arena. You can see the drop tower off in the distance. Rainbow's End has a height limit of 190 feet because the park is in the flight path for the Auckland airport. So that already puts them at a disadvantage that they can't build super tall. So their Intamin drop tower, Fearfall, is their tallest attraction here. It's actually pretty good. It's one of their giant drop models, about 180 feet in the air. Gives a great view of the surrounding area. Next door is also a Zamperla Discovery called Stratosphere. Unlike the ones that you might find in the Six Flags chain, this one is actually a bit more unique. This will send riders completely upside down and around. It's one of the few discoveries to do that. I think you can make an argument that these two rides are the most thrilling things here. I know most people who have heard of this park are going to know it because of the corkscrew. For a ride that's been operating since 1986, it's just very outdated. Three inversions, the loop, and the double corkscrew. Of course, I love the color scheme that they've given this. So iconic. That's, in my opinion, the best thing about this ride. Although, fun fact, this ride is currently operating with the old aero trains that came from Sea Viper over at SeaWorld. That was their aero looper that operated until 2014. So love that they're able to use that to extend this attraction's life. In terms of thrill rides, though, those three attractions are pretty much it. After that, there's a pretty big drop-off. They have a Zamperla Disco called Invader. There's a fun log flume here. This was actually the biggest surprise for me out of everything at Rainbow's End. It's called Enchanted Forest and it was built completely in-house. And Rainbow's End did a huge renovation for it over the 2021 and 2022 seasons. And so everything during the seven minute long experience has been updated. There's so many show scenes, a really cool indoor section, some pretty simple animatronics, but for what this ride is trying to do, it worked well. The ride itself is a mishmash of different fairy tale characters, including dragons, pirates, kings, fairies, you get the point. This is a ride that you are not going to want to miss. And speaking of must-dos, their second of the three roller coasters is Gold Rush. Like the Log Flume, this mine train was built completely in-house. And it's very unique. You got a well-themed queue and station building. You board your train, which only makes up two rows. You'll pass through multiple indoor sections with some really cool rock work, some pretty simple animatronics, multiple lift hills. It's cool. I will say after my first time experiencing it, I was left a little disappointed because to me, the entire ride feels like the pre-lift section for a larger up and coming drop and bank turn, but just doesn't ever get there. So there's all this buildup, but no payoff. Don't get me wrong, I think it's a great ride for kids. I think it's really cool that the park did this themselves, but there's definitely better mine trains out there. But after that, every other ride here is for kids. They got some plug and play flat rides and then their most recent roller coaster, which was still built over 10 years ago. That's Chaco Express, a little kitty coaster. This is one of the rides in this little kitty kingdom area. I like that it's covered. We encountered some rain during our visit, so I like that there's an area of the park where you can go escape that, dry off, still do a couple attractions. There's an arcade over there. They had some VR headsets, an escape room. The escape room and VR experiences are upcharges, but everything else in the park is included with your admission, even the go-karts. And then lastly, there's an interactive Triotech 4D theater that we did, and that was okay. But to be honest, that's pretty much it as far as attractions here at Rainbow's End. Like I said, there's not really a ton in it's kind of sad to me that this is New Zealand's only amusement park. This country is so cool and they absolutely deserve better. To me, this feels like a secondary park that's a supporting attraction for a much larger signature park nearby. But I guess here in this country that's very nature heavy, that signature attraction is just anything but a theme park. 
So don't get me wrong, I thought Rainbow's End was fine for what it is. I do really hope that they get something better here in the future. As I mentioned, their last new roller coaster was a kiddie coaster over 10 years ago. Prior to that was a roller coaster called Dragon's Flight in 1997, 15 years before Chaco Express. Of course, that ride is no longer around. It closed in 2012. Gold Rush was two years before Dragon's Flight in 1995. And then before that was a corkscrew nine years before that. So, I mean, if you follow this pattern of new rides, we should be getting pretty close to opening up a new roller coaster here. And of the roller coasters they've added, they've definitely gone the longest without adding a new thrill coaster. So logically, that would be the next big investment. Now, as I mentioned, Rainbow's End is landlocked, so where do you put it? Well, they took out their Viking ship back in 2017, and their go-kart track is right next door. In my opinion, this combined area is prime real estate for a big new roller coaster. In my opinion, the biggest gap in their lineup is they need a launch coaster as well as a smooth roller coaster, but that's to be expected. I think something with a decent sized drop would also be really good here. So I thought of a couple possibilities. One is a ride like Formula at Energylandia. This is perfect because a ride like this would be thrilling, but not too extreme. It's still a family park, so you can't go too wild. That's why I'd say probably no to something like an RMC Raptor. I think that might scare the kids. But if we look at Formula, it's about 300 feet long and 200 feet wide. If we occupied the go-kart plot of land, you'd be looking at almost 500 feet long and 300 feet wide. So you could totally fit an attraction like Formula. And sticking with Vacoma, something else that could work pretty well here is a ride that hangs below the track. If we were to stick with a thrilling ride, their STC would do well here. The only problem is, Hal Zuberkopf is the only one out there, and that ride is too big for this plot of land. Not saying they couldn't go custom, but clearly this is a park on a budget, so a plug and play model is definitely more likely. Now a step down from a thrill ride would be Vacoma's family suspended coaster. You could probably make a ride like Dragonflyer work here. Or if we get back to Trips Drill, shifting gears a little bit, how Zuberkopf might be too big, but Karaho is not. It's a pretty thin layout and it's a little less than 500 feet long. So a Gerslauer Infinity Coaster would totally work. That could give them a launch as well as a top hat, so that's a decent sized drop. And all of these would stay within their height limit. Of course, there are other options too, including some much more compact designs. So obviously it would depend on what the park is willing to give up land-wise as well as how much they can afford to spend. It's entirely possible that all of the attractions I've mentioned are well outside of the park's budget. Which if that's the case, it's a shame. Because I think that Rainbow's End has potential, but in its current state, it just feels very lackluster. Don't get me wrong, it has some charm to it. I like how there's random like funny statues around the park, such as these pigs here. We saw giant Alvin and the chipmunks. I also like how they've paid tribute to some of their past attractions, such as their old kitty coaster and Viking ship. All that is cool, but I feel like Rainbow's End doesn't have a lot of repeatability to it. Maybe if you're younger there is, but in my opinion, in its current state, Rainbow's End is kind of a one and done. I'm still glad I went, but out of all the things I did here in New Zealand, I definitely enjoyed some of the other non-theme park attractions more. But hey, those are just my thoughts on Rainbow's End just outside of Auckland, New Zealand. Let me know down in the comments below if you've been here, what you thought of it, if you agree with the points that I brought up, and of course, stay tuned for more park reviews here at Coaster Studios, and I'll see you next time.